Lernley Fontaine, a charming wall town called the Pearl of the Comtat, possesses an extraordinary legacy of over 40 fountains dating for the most part from the 18th and 19th century. Four of these fountains are classed as historic monuments like the famous Cormorant Fountain. Nadine Rogeret lives and works near here. She passionately restores Bouti, the white Provençal bed covers. These beautiful creations are traditional and are made in plastic colors. What's this marvel you're working on here? I'm working at the moment on this Bouti from the time of Napoleon. A Bouti is a bed cover. It's a work of art. It's a sculpture on cloth. C'est une sculpture sur tissu. What interests me with the booty is the way the material is sculpted to give the relief, partly traditional, partly the way it's done. By respecting this method of working, this knowledge, one can adapt it to our life today. So in a society where everything goes fast, one needs, through one hands, to go against the current and perpetuate history whilst enjoying oneself. So the booty is a method of work. But the bed cover is created according to the booty method used. And then it is the instrument, the booty, a needle which gives its name to the work, which gives its name to the method of work by which it's achieved. How many layers do you have? It is two layers of cotton. The top layer is cambric, underneath it's hemp, and the middle is stuffed with cotton stuffing. And how do you put the design on the material? We use a cotton cambric, two thicknesses, the top one and the bottom one. On the top one, the design is put on with a paper pencil. You start by reproducing the design. The cotton cambric of the booty is never washed until the booty is finished and ready for use. Because it tightens the threads of the material. You only wash it when all the stitching and stuffing has been finished. With booty, one always gets a bit of shrinkage. So when I take a square of cotton, I know I'll get at least 15% of shrinkage at the end. The more a booty is washed and boiled, the whiter it gets. And the nicer it looks on the bed. It can last for many generations. And how do you know it's an antique booty? C'est un vrai booty ancien. A real antique booty can be recognized by its transparency. It's magnificent when you hold it up to the daylight. You can see the transparency and all the work at that moment. You see here this booty that I'm restoring. It's interesting because you can see the stuffing is not transparent here because over the years the stuffing has got crammed down in a corner. And I'm filling up the empty space to give it a second life. In all forms of restoration, the idea is to give the object a longer life. And with booty, you have to work in a methodical manner from the bottom to the top. I repair all the points that have split. And in all the quilted bits, I stick my needle in with the stuffing like this. You have to pay attention not to do it in the wrong direction. And I finish it like this. With little curved scissors, I cut very close to the material. And with a small slither of olive wood, I push home the stuffing across the thickness. This part is well stuffed. I will go to a part where I feel with my thumb that it still needs stuffing.
Je vois par or when I see the transparency of the beak of this bird, which I've va, stitched. Now I need to fill the empty part. Donc, comme si je I've outlined it with my needle. I need to always Donc, to think of that. Pointu, it's pointed like the beak. I start with the curved part, pointing my needle towards the point of the beak. To continue the design, so that it really looks like a beak. Do you talk while you work? Yes, of course. Tongues are loosened. They say the first feminine movements were born in that period. The men were not suspicious. And the women, during this time, told their life stories very vividly and ardently. Whilst they did their embroidery. <laughs> Here's a booty which I'm working on. It has a design put on it by tracing paper which has been perforated by a needle. So that the pencil comes through on the material. The borders are turned over and sewn up. It's very important that the borders are finished before you start. And after that, I start the stuffing. You see the transparency in the booty, in the petals of the pansies and the gullies. We call that spaghetti. We always keep the names of pasta. When they are long, they are spaghettis, and when they are square, ravioli, and when they are round, vermicelli. But Nadine, how do you know which is the front because it's exactly the same? It is exactly the same. One ought not to see the stuffing or where it's been. Who did that? It was me. It's incredible. It's it's really, really impossible to, to tell which is the front. You ought not to be able to see. If you can see, it isn't finished. It always has to look like that. But you know which is the front. Is it this side? It's this side, I know, because the knot of the basket is on the right. But is that the only reason? Yes, that's the only reason. But when you touch it like that, it's hard. <laughs> Because it has to be washed, washed and washed for a long time without ruining it. Watch, here comes a little masterpiece. A very, very beautiful booty. 